Good morning, everyone. And I picked up some stress tips too. So that was really great at listening in on the previous session. Um, I wanna talk about uh, the role that technology is going to play, uh, particularly in the engagement with 21st century learners. The kids you have at home right now who are in high school, who are thinking ahead to the kinds of choices they may wish to make as they move forward. If they're anything like my own child, she really did not have a good sense of what she wanted to do. And there weren't really great ways of collectively seeing all of the offerings of all of the universities and colleges in the province. And I'm from British Columbia, but now in Ontario. But we're very fortunate here in Ontario to have uh, a collection of resources and courses that are very searchable that allow parents to work with students or students individually to explore the kinds of post-secondary options that may be open to them. Everything from uh, trades training and vocational skills to nursing and healthcare to engineering, all of the options are there. And eCampus Ontario is a government funded organization, a corporation that is owned by our universities and colleges here in Ontario. And is owned, it is set up precisely to provide information clearly and succinctly to students and parents about post-secondary options. So I'm the CEO of the organization. Um, everything we do happens in the online space either through a desktop computer or a mobile device. And I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the kinds of tools and technologies that are available to us all today. And we're using all of those collectively to bring better learning experiences to students of the 21st century. One of the things that's really critical to understand as we move forward is that technology and learning are forever intertwined. As soon as the internet became uh, a methodology or a, a, an infrastructure for commerce and information flow, it also became a conduit for learning as well. And we all know that the first thing we do when we wanna find out something New is to go to Google and find out about it, or if it's something we want to be able to do, we often go to YouTube to see if there's a video that demonstrates that activity for us. It's very much that generation of thinking is influencing many of the courses and programs that are offered in our institutions currently. So uh, those are the kinds of issues I want to talk about a little bit this morning. So the first thing <clears throat> I would like to encourage you to do is to use the eCampusOntario.ca website to see the range of academic and training programs that are available online in Ontario. If you go to our website, you will find listings for over 16,000 courses and close to 800 programs that are offered by our universities and colleges and those listings go very deep into all of the kinds of subject matter and topics that are very contemporary and current these days. This screen alone is showing you just a few of the things around computer applications and quality assurance, network engineering, molecular biology. But we also look at things like uh, children and children's studies, early childhood education, literature, um, anthropology, and information technology. The notion in 2017 is that many students who end up going to college or university also have a part-time job or they play sports or they have some other responsibilities, may in fact be a parent who's going back to university or college and they have childcare responsibilities as well. And so people are looking for ways to augment the programs that they take with online and more accessible ways of learning that help them to move forward in their program towards a credential that may lead to a better job, a new job, uh, a promotion, or to further study if they're planning to go forwards. I think it's important that we begin to introduce kids, children, 
young adults who are in uh, higher, who are in uh, K to 12 in the high school era to take a look at the opportunities that are available to them as they move forward. And don't think necessarily that every course they may wish to take will be a face-to-face -face classroom experience, that there are other options available to them. Certainly in the business realm, this is already the case. Um, this is LinkedIn's lynda.com website that provides on-demand video-based learning to individuals or groups who want to learn some new skills quickly with very short videos that go right to the heart of a skill that may be useful to you. In many of our courses um, that we offer in the post-secondary sector, these end up becoming supplementary opportunities for students and public libraries are a great place to go to find lynda.com and an opportunity to learn some new skills, not only as a student uh, going into the uh, higher education or post-secondary training or into a trades environment, but also for parents as well to get attuned to some of these new ways of thinking. Our government here in Ontario thought it was so important that students have these broad horizontal skills as well as those deep vertical skills in the programs that they just recently licensed lynda.com for every student, instructor, and staff member in our post-secondary institutions because they want to begin to explore the opportunities that online and video-based learning can afford everyone in society to move forward and to learn new stuff. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about is that rethinking is really at the core of our practice when we work with today's students. When you were in school, when I was in school, we came to class and we came to class expecting an experience from an instructor who would kind of stand and deliver full frontal teaching to us. But today it works differently. And our instructors are more in tune with the needs of students and are very willing to work with them to begin to shape and co-create that learning experience in a way that makes it better for students. Our high schools are doing a very good job in 2017 of looking at the kinds of attributes that students are bringing forward as they move into post-secondary or training. They're much more self-directed in many cases. They are media literate. They're becoming more globally aware. They're not experts in these skill areas, but they're novices learning to be better. And above all, they don't mind working together with their friends and colleagues as collaborators. And they like the notion of being civically engaged. And so these are the kinds of attributes that we have to build upon in our training and academic programs. For us at eCampus Ontario, we're a kind of a research and development group working with our educational institutions to rethink and look ahead to the kinds of programs and services we need to offer in the educational space in 2017 and beyond. And in three particular areas, we're focused. And I wanna talk about each very briefly and then give you an implication of each of those that might cause you to think differently about your child and how they approach their education. The first is rethinking the learning experience. Many of the things that happen uh, in our classrooms these days um, give us opportunities to think differently about how the teaching and learning process happens. And one of the ways forward is to make the kinds of learning experiences that students have more authentic and more relevant to the real world. And one of the ways that we're experimenting with that is to bring students into the learning design process. We just set up something called the Student Experience Design Studio and the Student Experience Design Lab. And we invited 30 students from around the province to participate with us 
and with faculty from institutions and with uh, businesses and, and vendors in the tech community to explore new ways forward. You can imagine that when you invite students to think about their own learning, they don't hold back. They're very, very willing to think together with their colleagues how to make things better in the learning experiences they have. They love to prototype. They love to think about new ways that haven't been thought about. They like to look at new technologies and think how those could be used in their learning process. Uh, in March of this year, we took um, about 100 students to the Mars Innovation Center in downtown Toronto and paired them up with some industry partners to look at things like virtual and augmented reality to see how they could play a role in not only being consumers of this technology, but playing a role in the invention of the experiences that they have using that technology. Another big area for students is the trap they sometimes find themselves in, especially after graduation. You can't get a job without experience and you need experience to get a job. So how do you get that experience while you're still in the education system? And so they've been working with uh, software companies that are planning online practicums so that students can do practicums from within their classes for business and industry at the same time they're learning the core curricular uh, details of the program they're in. The students started thinking about what would an eBay for practicums and, and online job opportunities look like. And so they've been thinking in really creative ways about that. And so the implication for you as parents is that learners are very willing to engage with their instructors in co-creating great learning experiences. And so we have to really work with them to think about being proactive learners, not just reactive and recipients of knowledge and learning, but actually being proactive and bringing their ideas to the fore in their classrooms, voicing good ideas that might help them and their colleagues become better learners. Another area for us is rethinking learning resources. And this one's really a great one for parents because it means um, the affordability of higher education is much better. What happens when you bring teaching and learning into the open? Um, our colleagues at the University of British Columbia experimented with what's called a free and open textbook for students in first year physics. So no cost for the textbook, free, open, delivered to your mobile device. And they saved students at UBC $90,000 the first time they did that. The math department said we can do a lot better and they tried it out with first year math books and saved students a million dollars. Now, nearly all UBC math textbooks are available online for free. You can imagine that taking a huge bill off the plates of parents or students as they enter post-secondary is a really great thing to do. Some colleges in the US and in Western Canada are experimenting with what they call the textbook free degree. No resource costs for students in the program, meaning that it's highly affordable to take the program when you don't have to pay for textbooks and ancillary resources that go with it. It's a great idea. There are many of these open source textbooks already available and you can find them on the web. And we announced in June of this year with our minister and with students present, a library of over 200 open textbooks for first and second year courses in college and university in Ontario as available for free that faculty can use with their students or students can simply download as a supplementary material, a really nice way to go. When we talk to students about these ideas, they're highly enthused about that opportunity. When we talk to faculty, it's the same. They're idealists. They want to do the best they can for their students. And so making it more affordable, making it more engaging is something that really turns their crank. 
Our open textbook library is available to the public. You can go and look right now. It is openlibrary.ecampusontario.ca. You can find open textbooks there. You can download them to your tablet or device. You can have them printed if you need a print copy. All of those affordances are available. So the implication is, is that students are more aware of affordable and inexpensive resource models and use the internet to support their learning programs. It is a new medium and we should be encouraging them to use it more actively, not discouraging them. There are some real opportunities for amazing communication and collection of resources and materials that can happen using the net. And finally, the third area of practice, and this is the one that also captures parents' imagination, is what does my student do after they graduate? And if they are coming into the university and are exploring during those first early years, what kinds of internships and practicums and community volunteer programs will be important to them to find their way, to understand what they're good at and what they like? Government produced a report called Building the Workforce of Tomorrow. And it's based on the notion that every student in our post-secondary system should have a meaningful work experience while they're learning. What we're trying to build is what we would call the T-shaped student. A student who knows a lot of information, has good knowledge and skills in an area of practice could be plumbing, could be nursing, but they also have a set of cross-domain skills and attitudes. They know how to work with people. They know all about ethics. They understand projects and management. They have a whole other set of skills that help them get employed. And the question is, how do we get this happening with our students in the system? Our universities and colleges are asking these questions all the time. How do we change the university and college system to make it more practical and real world for many of our students? What are the competencies that they need to become employed or to go on to further education or just to be good neighbors and citizens? What do those look like and can we pinpoint them? Because what we're really after in today's post-secondary education system is the notion of every student coming out with a 3D CV. They know stuff, they know how to do things, and they have a set of can-do skills that help them get employed or work further in the education system to find their path. And the implication is, what can you do to make sure your children will be aware of the need for knowledge and skills that broaden their opportunities beyond university or college. It's not just about learning the skills to be a nurse. There's more to it. You have to work with people. You have to work in ways that are important to the community and make you a good citizen too. That is my pitch about looking ahead to the future, and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, David, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Just want to yes, make sure. I can thank hear you. you. See me? Awesome. Thank you so much for that presentation. It was really, really fantastic, very detailed. We obviously need to make a lot of changes in order to help our children move forward. Um, what can parents themselves do? Um, you know, what resources are in the community to, to help parents? Because I think that is a challenge in schools right now, is what are, how can we so I think there's a, I think there's a bunch of things you can do. I think that the role of libraries has changed significantly over the last few years. And instead of just being a place to come and get books, libraries are now community learning hubs where you can go to find out mm -hmm about opportunities to learn new skills, to take part in workshops or maker spaces, to use software and technologies like lynda.com to learn skills quickly. I think a library is a great place to think about going back to. They have changed significantly. 
The other is to look to your local college, especially, or your local university for open houses and opportunities to go in and see the kinds of programs that students are taking part in. Most of the time when they have those open houses, the guides are students themselves, not faculty or instructors or administrators. Mm -hmm. And the enthusiasm that those students generate through their you know, charismatic kinds of presentations about, hey, I'm in this program and here's why I love it, that is infectious. And that's the kind of things that students coming along who are not quite in post-secondary yet or in a training program want to be able to hear. They need good role models to show them what the possibilities are. Fantastic. And, and I have to agree with you in terms of the library. I know the libraries, um, at least in my experience, have really been trying to be more progressive um, in terms of technology and setting up these innovation hubs and making it free and accessible to the community. So definitely I agree with the resource. There are online resource tools, aren't there, for parents to take the initiative, like code.org. Yes. Would be one to there, there are. Training. There, there are lots of new businesses springing up that run short courses and programs outside the public education system that are ways to think differently about new uh, ways of working, new ways of thinking, new skills that are important in a very technology uh, intensive age that we live in. So I would encourage parents to look for as many opportunities as possible. Kids love gaming. Kids love going to camps where they learn to code games and things of that sort. They love robots and robotics. Those are the kinds of skills that are going to be in high demand. It's not simply that we're going to have a whole culture of game builders, but the skills they learn in that process are important to many other uh, industries. And I think it's important that we give students as many opportunities to find their passion and to go with it. I know Microsoft themselves have training sessions and they're free to the community in their stores. Um, so I encourage parents to explore those training sessions too and, and sign them up for camp and, and those activities. And, and some of them, are, you may be able to join them, but learning with them, I think is key. Now I do have one last question here from you from Nancy. So can students suggest books to be included if it's not available in the eCampus Open Library? Yes, you can. I mean, we're always looking for books that are gaps in the system. And in fact, we fund through government funding the development of books that are gaps in the Open Library. Um, we're hoping to build that library up over time so that it has almost every first and second year um, book in our post-secondary system, no matter what program you're in, that's, that's the goal, and make those available free to the end user and distributable in paper, online, or to a device. I mean, in many cases, the public is paying for this, so our position is if it's, if it's going to be built with public funding, then the public should have access to it. So if you go to our open library website, you'll see there's no login. You can just go right on, download, do what you wanted to do. Wonderful. And hopefully that will trickle down as well, too, not just for post-secondary, then secondary lab access and elementary. And yes. so you're, um, thank you to uh, you and your organization for spearheading this and being part of our day. And we definitely will keep in contact and see what we can do to empower more parents to to, to support them and their students in this lear in e-learning. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure and I hope the rest, uh, the rest of your day is very productive.